you just keep being you. Hustle, loyalty, respect, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my original advice. Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews. Our first guest has about nine years in the business. He's wrestled for promotions like GCW and House of Glory, where he's a former world champion. Please welcome Smiley, the Psycho Lucha. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Always happy to have a fellow fellow New Yorker, at least living right now. Uh, And our next guest, absolute veteran in the wrestling business, has made his name known worldwide promotions like Pro Wrestling Noah, ROH, NXT, of course, WWE, and most recently New Japan, Reuniting with TMDK, please welcome Shane Haste. Woo, yay! <laughs> it's really cool. No, it's awesome to have you here. Thank it is, me. and uh, absolutely, and really both yeah. of you. I always like to start. Always like to start at the beginning of your respective journeys. Uh, and Smiley, I'll go to you. I've heard that uh, you wanted to be a, a stuntman or a wrestler, right? It was one or the other. So, can you tell us why you picked wrestler? How that all came about? Because uh, I failed at the stuntman thing. Uh, <laughs> no, I uh, when I was younger, it was always one of the two. Because like I, I can't do a nine to five behind a desk. Like it would drive me insane. Yeah. No. So uh, I, I would look at something like like stunt work, and it's like, oh, I get to jump off of buildings into the crash pads. That sounds great, you know. And when I uh, graduated high school, my mom actually bought me a plane ticket to go to California and give it a shot. So I moved to California. I was out there for, I think it was like seven, eight months. And I was homeless for three of them yeah. because like, living in California is just rough. And like the stunt business is very like, you know, kind of get, catch 22. It's like, you have to be in the union to get on the movies, but you can't get into the union unless you're on the movies. Yeah. So I was doing basically like indie films and like, student shows and stuff like that and they had me jumping out of windows onto like mattresses they found from around town they all that people threw out in the garbage so it's like ah, right. this is probably not <laughs> for me yeah so i went home back to maine uh where i'm originally from and uh i was literally like it was kind of a whim on how i ended up here so uh, i was a manager for a photo studio at the time and uh, my cousin called me up while I was on my lunch break and went, hey, you want to move to New York with me and your brother? And I went, okay. And I just literally walked in, called my district manager, quit that same day. Gave, well, gave him my two weeks notice. And then two weeks later, I moved to New York. And then while I was on the bus coming to New York, I had to email uh, Tommy Dreamer's website. And I went, hey, I'm moving to New York. I feel like I should try and do something with my life. I'm thinking about trying wrestling and I get, I told him, I'm like, I could either go Johnny rods, you know, where I know you and a lot of the ECW guys were trained. I also see amazing red got a school house of glory. So I was thinking about that too. And Tommy just kind of told me, he's like, you know, either way you'll get a good education, but Johnny ain't going to get in the ring with you. He goes red will. So that take that for what it's worth. And then base that off of how much each one costs and, make your decision so i ended up at house of glory and been building my name ever since that's cool man that's cool that is that's really cool i love the story uh and shane same question for you really where it all started if you resonate with any parts of that journey at all or... uh that's why i'm more so now than back when i started 19 years ago i started training maybe 20 years ago now, and that's it was the only school you could train at in Perth was the EPW uh, Explosive Pro Wrestling School. Um, but it, before even that came around, I just backyarded with my mates. Um, and then as soon as the school came along and they started accepting people, that's when I joined that school, started training there under Davis Storm and uh, Tyler Jacobs are my main first two trainers. And like to this day, he's still like Davis Storm and, He's still training people out in Perth and, like, genius mind. Anytime I go home, I'll go and 
go to the school and just how easy it is for things to come to his mind. Um, then from there, travel to the States a few times, San Bernardino with Jesse Hernandez, um, doing stuff with NWA at the time with Dave Marquez and just coming back and forth doing that. Then did um, Harley Races Camp. Um, then going from there, because uh, that's the thing, like we were getting, me and Mikey were doing some stuff and we are getting somewhere because um, he'd been coming over to America more than I had. But every time you go to a new place or you come back, you have to start from the bottom again. And it's like you. The, by the time I was leaving on my three-month holidays here, they'd be like title matches and stuff like that. And I'd come go back to Australia, come back here, and then I'm like opening the show again. It's like, come on, man. <laughs> so we were thinking like, man, to get that next level, we thought, well, you know what? Let's take a step backwards in a way and go to a training camp. Um, we'd both been wrestling for maybe 10 years at this point, maybe almost 10 years at this point anyway. And we're like, we're trying to get onto these other shows. We're like, well, we're not going forward. So let's go back to make connections and then see if that move us forward. And obviously it did because then from that, we went to NOAA, from NOAA to WWE. Um, and now uh, I've since parted ways with WWE and um, – <laughs> I'm here in LA, uh, LA SoCal area, and it's funny. Like I do get people, I do things, and people are like uh, my fiance is in the acting business, and there's always people like, "Oh, you should get into stunt work. You should do stunt work. Oh, you would do great in stunt work." And I'm like, "Yeah, man, for sure. Like, hook me up. Like, yeah, I've got a hookup. I can get you in." I'm still waiting. <laughs> like it doesn't come back, <laughs> but. It's all right. My schedule is getting pretty busy with the wrestling stuff again. So, yeah, but that's like you're saying, like, and to my, my fiance with uh, her acting stuff, there are that, that to get into the SAG guild or whatever, mm -hmm. you have to do SAG stuff, but you can't do it. Like, it's a very unique experience for this job, but you can't get experience without already having experience. Catch 22 thing is, yeah, insane. Like, oh, it's brutal. But once you're in, once you're in, I think I hear it can be pretty damn good. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, amazing journey, obviously. Yeah, from, as you said, from NOAA to WWE and where you first started. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you did Harley Race's training camp. That's awesome. Do you have any stories from there or, or some unique skills you learned from there? That one was crazy because, like, I don't know if you see all the Harley Race, the photos and whatnot of the training camps. It's like 30, 40 people at each of them, right? Right. So we were at the first one after his wife died um, and she apparently did a lot of the planning for it. So this one, there were eight people, including us. Wow. Um, no one from WWE, represented from WWE came. Uh, I don't think anyone from New Japan came. The only people there were people from uh, NOAA. And uh, there, there was a good group of guys there. Like, it was, we all got along very well and whatnot. And, but I think Mikey and I were the only two experienced wrestlers in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the final thing after the training days, which it, it was fine, like, because there, there wasn't like any big name wrestler there. We were just doing training um, and just trying to show our skills to. To Harley as well, because he did have a great connection with WWE and the Pro Wrestling NOAA representatives. Um, and the end of the camp was, uh, <laughs> it was like the last day I remember. <laughs> Victor, one of the, a guy came from Russia to do it. And on the last day, he goes, but where is WWE? <laughs> 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 The last thing was like the, the show was meant to cap it all off. Yeah. And uh, you know, in Missouri, you have to have a wrestling license and do blood tests and stuff like that. So that puts you out of pocket about 200 bucks blood work and then a licensing. So we're just like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> so <laughs> we didn't even wrestle on the last, the blow off thing. And then we were the ones to get the NOAA contracts. And wow. <laughs> Them talking to like, and then we kept talking to Harley about it after, and 
he, we told him we we're just going to drive to SCW. He said, we'll just drive and knock on the door. And he was like, no, no, wait, wait, I'll call him. And so for about a week, he was on the phone every single day trying to get to Stanford or whatever it is. Um, and then eventually, yeah, they gave him a call back and he put in a really good, really good word for us. And we ended up getting flown to Tampa, put up in a hotel, um, a paid tryout for two and a half days at FCW. Um, it was very much like a favor to Harley, which, you mm. know, it was, it was great. But it was also like a taste. That was our first taste of um, kind of what it was like there. I'm not sure if I'd done a WWE tryout in Australia before that, but this was like our first one. And like so many people with it were just massive dudes. We're like, damn, we're the smallest people here. Apart from like one or two smaller, smaller guys. We're like, damn, these are all like football players and stuff like that. And it was guys like um, Roman Reigns was there at it. Uh, Seth was there. Uh, Austin Creed. There was like a lot of guys in that thing. And so we just did uh, like a promo day, a drills day. Um, we, had a, we, had a, we had to do a match. And then on the last day, they had uh, FCW, like a coconut show. And they had Mikey and I work the merchandise desk at the show at uh, F F FCW Largo. Uh, so we worked the merch. And I'm like, I don't even know what this American currency is. Like, <laughs> sure. I'm like, what a weird test this is. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, years later, we would sign with NXT. And we went back to that same building and did NXT shows. It's crazy, man. Like, big turnaround what that is so, yeah yeah that was, a, that was an experience man wow that's really cool uh smiley to throw it to you you have a very unique style i think everyone should definitely go check it out it's it's some of the most innovative offense that i've seen and i'm curious who some of the people you looked up to were and if if they're in the same realm of what you do in the ring yeah i mean a lot of the guys like coming up that like i i was really big fans of like Obviously, like like I said, I was trained by Amazing Red, so he was a big mm -hmm. influence on me. But like then there was people like like for me it was like uh, Nova out in like ECW or like Chris Canyon and WCW and stuff like that. Like I love those guys who like every time you would watch a match, you saw something new. So like that's what I kind of go for is like every time I go into a ring, I want to try and like show something new that nobody's ever seen before. You know, so I'm always like, like constantly like thinking like of how I can like come up with something new or cool or different because like, like I know a lot of people do it and like, but I remember doing a match one time and the guy's like, yeah, we'll do the seat. I'll do the sequence and I'll do this. And I'll wrap around. And I'll give you this and I'll drop and this. And it's like, okay, but what if we did something like this? He goes, no, if we don't do it, the sequence I said, I don't want to do it. And I went. But you do that sequence every other t every time, like right. people are gonna catch on. <laughs> like I, I couldn't do it. It's like to me, it's like I have to I have to mess up the status quo almost, mm -hmm. and like kind of like throw a wrench in everybody's like machinery because like it keeps it more fun and fresh for me. So like I, I was definitely watching a, like a lot of those guys. I was always coming up with something new. It's great. Like I don't know, I don't know how. Like are you working a lot of the same companies and the same people over and over again, kind of thing, or are you go in different places all the time. Because the thing, like uh, with WWE and their road shows and things like that, and it's like the same if you go to see a band play. Like you want them to play the hits, right? right. So I'm sure Michaels would say, like you know, you go and you end up you just do the same stuff over and over again, but it's in front of fresh eyes. And I'm like, and I get what like, dude, that can get monotonous. Like, you want to change things up. Um, like, a lot of the times, man, we were wrestling the exact same people over and over and over again. And it is it is hard. Like, once you do start to get into that rhythm of knowing you, you, you know your match, you're like, whatever, we'll just do the same thing we did the other day. It's a new crowd. It's going to be great. But, like, you can get stuck in that, and it's good. The longer you can not do that, the better the, the, you can do the things people want to see you do, but set them up different or yeah. uh, get out of them differently. 
then yeah, you're giving people what they want and something unique. Um, yeah, it's, it's really it's good, man. It's really cool to be able to do that. Yeah, it's no, it's not always like always a new move per se, but like sometimes yeah. it's like a new transition. Yeah, it's like a new way yeah. to get into the bread and butter mm-hmm. and stuff like that because it's like you know, it's like as soon as you see flying shoulder tackle, you know you already know the rest of the sequence. Yeah, you know? so it's like. For me, it's like I, I want to try and come up with new ways to come up with like you know yeah. different things I do. Like like one of my go tos, like my bread and butters, is I do kind of like this crazy splash where I hit the ropes kind of sideways, kind of like how Andrade and them they yeah. do the little gimmick where they hold yeah. on to the ropes. Yeah, I jump into the ropes like that, but instead of holding on, I use it as a springboard to That's launch cool. myself sideways, and I corkscrew out of it into a splash. Nice. Yeah, I remember, like, um, Sammy Callahan used to do like the the back and then spring forward yeah. splash straight down like that. I love I love that splash. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, it's like now it's like how yeah. many different ways can I come up to get the person sitting where I need them? Other yeah. than yeah. Snapmare, you're good. Here I go. You yeah. know, like, back body yeah. drop and landed where I need you. Yeah. Cool. You know. Yeah. You definitely do like uh, they, they stop themselves at the rope, give you a boot, you charge in, they bandera, you get your thing, turn around, you drop down, pull their legs out, yeah. then you nip back in. Um, just, you know, <laughs> like that. But it's also cool, like, if you're wrestling different people all the time, they have their moves, you have your moves. So if you're wrestling the same person, you like, they tend to have the same moves, but different opponents and fresh posts, and so many people out there wrestling at the moment, yeah. trying to make do their own thing, um, carve a name for themselves, being unique in their own way, it definitely helps um, all these different combinations of matches to be different. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more with that as a as a fan. And uh, Shane, so you made your, your Pro Wrestling Noah debut in 2011. And- yeah. Yes, we did the camp in 2010. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that would make sense. And that was in that time you captured not only tag team gold, but you were named tag team of the year by uh, Tokyo Sports Magazine. So can you just take us into the beginning of what it was like heading into Japan and adjusting to that new style? Yeah, like, it's a, it's like, yeah it did take, yeah, I think we got the GHC heavyweight tag titles in 2013. So it did take two years or whatnot. But, so the first few times we were doing three months on, three months off, so we'd get a working visa there for three months, come back, and then they'd bring us back roughly three months later. Um, yeah, the first trip and the first match, I remember the first match we had over there was me versus Mikey. We just, that first tour, we wrestled each other maybe four times. Um, and the first match, we went out and we're like, all right, we're going to go out there fucking kill it we're gonna hit everything so i did like a coast to coast mikey did a shooting star we did a dive uh i think the finish was like a, i did a straight jacket german suplex to mike nice. and the crowd was like <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny and then we came back and mara fuji was like eh not good <laughs> he just it's like he said like matches in japan he told us like matches go up. So you start low and then build to the finish. In America, it's kind of up and down, up and down, and mm-hmm. eventually you get to the top. Um, but he said also, like, your career is like that too. So if you go out there, they want to see uh, a wrestler's journey. So you see, like, a lot of young boys in plain gear, plain haircuts, and all they do is drop kicks and body slams. Because it's the thing of, like, uh, especially like a, a lot of the very young young boys would only hit drop kicks, drop kicks, try for a body slam, get stopped, lose, and then you do that for months, weeks, and months. Then finally they hit that body slam, and the crowd goes fucking nuts. So they'll tell us like, bring it back, like be go smaller, let the crowd grow with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so then the next match we had, we just wrestled a lot, a little bit of back and forth offense. So we build very simple finish. We just went for the uh, Boston Crab finish, you know, just to do it. And it got a great reaction. Like we got like, yeah, like that's so like when we, the same thing, like taking it back down so then you can rebuild in the fans' eyes because we were brought over as 
foreign young boys. We weren't like I have seen other guys come over there and be pushed in, straight away into the main event, and that's you have to do that. Um, like yeah, so for us, it was they wanted to see that slow build, um, and then starting as an underdog and working your way up and working your way up. And I think that was um, that listening and uh, doing what we were told and stuff like that really helped endear us to the fans, and that definitely helped our position within the company. And uh, like everything we like, winning titles, and getting title matches um, was like. A reward for your hard work. It was great. Like, so everything felt earned there. Yeah. Mm. Definitely. And so you mentioned Marafuji. Was he uh like a mentor? Was he one of your trainers, Marafuji? When uh he would come in and out of training a fair bit. Um Tanaguchi and Aoki, old friend of mine, ours um who passed away very sadly. He was Aoki was our main trainer in the dojo um and he was very <laughs> cold and never spoke to us much at all at the beginning and then we kind of got over this hurdle of uh respect and he was like a great such a good guy so and they would help us like doing the young boy stuff and things like that and um the where to be how to be what times what like they tell like They'll tell you the office will tell you certain things, and this is like with a lot of companies. The office will tell you certain things, but they they mean something different as well. Like the be be at the bus for twelve o'clock means be there for eleven thirty. Like be there. Like oh no no, you don't have to worry about doing that. Yes, do that. <laughs> but, so we learned we learned the hard way begin with but then once we kind of they saw that we would clue on and we'd stay and stick around that's when those like they kind of let you in a lot more and uh there's just funny parts like they speak such good english like a lot of the guys spoke such good english but when new guys would come in they would only speak japanese to them um and they would get mikey and i to translate but the thing is we didn't speak japanese either so we, would be, so we would get pulled aside beforehand and uh, they tell us, All right, so I want to tell them to do this, like tell them to make sure that the ice packs are always full before the show. And so they're, okay, and we'll go over. And then they'd sternly speak to them in Japanese and we'd be like, oh, okay, so what they want for you to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Such a rib. But yeah, just that's the funny things. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, Smiley, have you made it to Japan yet uh, at all? Or is it on I your list? wish. Uh, yeah. There's so many places like on my list right now. Um, I, what I got to do is I got to get my passport book because I have the passport card. So I go to Canada a lot and oh, I'm constantly right. like wrestling for like, like um, uh, Lucha Tia or well, it's Lucha De Demand Lucha Now. Uh, I, I've been up there for Super Kicked and Death Proof Fight mm -hmm. Club. So, like, I've been to Canada a lot, and I'm dying to get to Mexico. That's huge one on my on my list. And uh, I mean, I, I have some people that are really like rooting for me, like uh, down in Mexico. Mister Iguana has, you know, he's he's spoken about like trying to help me like get my name into the right places. And Laredo Kid said the same thing. Like, he'll pitch my name to the right places. Like, England is a huge one. I'm dying to go to England. And, uh, like, Dean Allmark out in England, he's he's told me that he'll pitch my name around to some places to try and get me out there. I just got to get that pesky little book. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know the passport card was a thing. Yeah. I've, it, I've it, always had, yeah, two, the, the book. I'm onto my second passport at the moment like wow. it fills up after a while like once you start yeah. man like the ball starts rolling then that's like it's being seen you know what i mean it's the hard yeah. like getting that foot in the door and getting is like getting your foot in the door can get you through the door a lot of the time um but it's just yeah that getting seen is the hardest part yeah i i'd say it all the time it's like i know i'm very confident in my ability it's just I need that right set of eyes to catch like catch a glimpse of me, you yeah. know. Like, and I like we've had some like uh, red shoes came through House of Glory one time, and this was like early on when I was like maybe like year 
one or two. Yeah. And like, he took a liking to me when he came in and he stopped by to like, you know, check out our training. Yeah. It's like, I, do, I just need them right set of eyes at the right set of time, you know? Uh, at the right I time, yeah. The timing has been very hard the last few years. A lot of people I know, like, yeah, right before the pandemic had, had the right eyes on them and then quarantining and shutdowns and stuff happened, man. And that's, that was a killer for a lot of people's momentum. Yeah, there, there's one out in England that I, I'm dying to get to is, like, the summer camp shows. Yeah, where, I've heard a lot of good things about those. Like, a lot of fun. Good money, um, yeah, great yeah. experience. And just, I, I've, just, never been, I've never been to England. I've never been to Europe either. So, Shane, during you spent some time with Ring of Honor. Is it side by side during that time? That was very early on. So, like during the time we had off from Noah in that first one, we were doing like three months on, three or four months off. Uh, I don't know why we went to America. I have no <laughs> idea why we went. I for the light, I'm like, why would I spend my money and go to America? Like, why, so fun. Spend, why not England? Like, right? Yeah. I think it was just like because Mikey had his green card and he had to be in America at least once a year, showing that he was using it. So maybe we went for that reason, and we just we knew the people, we knew a few people in. What a blur of a memory! <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So we met people there. We did the the first round. They moved us on to the second round. Um, they were very interested in using us more, but I didn't have a working visa or my green card. So that, and they weren't doing the financial point there to do new green cards or visas for people, um, which it wouldn't, in the long run, it wouldn't have worked out because we ended up doing NOAA full, we ended up becoming full time on the NOAA roster. And I preferred right. that. Yeah, that was definitely where, that was where I wanted to be. No, oh, of course, uh, definitely. Well, they, while there, you got to you got to get in the ring with some pretty cool people. One being the Briscoes, which is one of my yeah. favorite tag teams, and that's kind of what I wanted to get at. Was how was that match? There, I mean, such intensity. How was it Dude. being in the ring with the Briscoes? Insane, they like they just they have endless energy. And I was a younger man at the time too, and I thought I had it in and We're trying to put heat on him. I'm like, do I have to fucking really fight this guy to keep him down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, uh, yeah, it's very good. So for like Japan, people kind of like take their time with things and ramp up at the end, but they were just like, go, go, go from the start. And um, yeah, I have very fond memories of that and that uh, trip down to St. Petersburg, I believe it was, Florida. Yeah, we had a good night out that night. Eddie Edwards, I think that was like the first time we hung out with Eddie Edwards. He became a very good friend of ours. Um, and out drinking with the Briscoes and whatnot too. Um, yeah, that, I think we did uh, Impact around that time as well. We did, uh, and I was, because uh, we stayed in Orlando for like a month or two at an extended stay, wow. trying to like get more gigs and whatever but um we never heard back from them at that time either so it sucks to be them um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we uh did we did a segment we did i was uh bobby Roode's lawyer in a promo bit with um <laughs> game storm and like yeah I, and i'm not Known for my promos, everyone's like, "Look, Shane's got a promo." <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I have to remember stuff, like I, I can oh, talk. No. I can't remember shit. And this was like a big paragraph of lawyery talk. <laughs> but they're like, wow. well, you're there with a piece of paper. We'll just write it in front. So I had the actual script just in front of me. Um, they're like, "Yeah, why wouldn't you just be reading what this official notice off this thing?" And yeah. then. The way they filmed it too was the hard cam side. There was no one there except for like a few people at the production desk. So I'm just looking at this black wall with a red light on it. So I'm like, there's no nerves of being out in front of a crowd. I'm just taught. They said, take it as long as you need to do it. Yada, yada, blah, blah. And I was like, cool. Came backstage and H Hogan was great promo, brother. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you. I'm fucking good. I'm good at this shit. Uh, I think the next day, Mikey was a cop for someone, like a security. And then we had a dark match with uh, Gunner and K 
Kid Cash. And uh, before, I, and I didn't know this beforehand, I know Kid Cash had wrestled in Australia and he had a bad experience with someone. I don't remember who he worked, but it was a thing of, he ended up like beating the shit out of them because they were shit or something like that. And so we were in the match and before it, he was, he was very quick and short with us. Gunnar was polite, never said much. He is very, he is a polite guy. Um, but Cash was very short with us and mean. And then in the match, I remember like they're running heat on me or something. And he starts wailing on me, like <laughs> chopping the shit out of me. But I'm like, man, I just come from Japan. Like, this is, yeah. I think they shot by Shiozaki. And like, he, he was like, Cash is a fucking, he's, he could, he's a strong man. Like, um, yeah, but I just like, boom, boom, kept going. Nothing phased us. Match, great match. Sting afterwards said, great match, you know. I'm oh, sure he watched it. it. I'm yeah, sure right. he watched <laughs> it. <laughs> he was there. This was like the, the closing dark. So he stuck around and was like by the monitors back. So that was really cool. Get a, a great promo from Hogan and a good match from Sting. Um, so we're feeling good about that. And then afterwards, Kid Cash was fucking super nice to us and chill. And he told us the story about what the last Australian that he wrestled. And so he was a little bit more protective. <laughs> like, yeah, right. that was all that same tour, man. What a tour. Wow. That's, that's so much packed into that. It was like two uh, weeks. I think. It was like two, two weeks, weeks and all that. Yeah. And then we, so we did the, yeah, we did Cincinnati, the start of the Proving Grounds one. Then we went to St. Petersburg, whatever it is. Uh, Orlando did Impact there, then did the Ring of Honor. I'm fairly sure this is how it worked. It may, I might have things muddled up. <laughs> then we drove, and by we, I mean Mikey, we drove to <laughs> Vegas. And met the same friends that we'd met up with for the Mania thing, so friends of ours. Met them back in Vegas, all night drinking, um, all day and night drinking. Then the next day we had NWA in Hollywood. And the call time for that was like 11 o'clock or something. We make it there by 11, hungover. <laughs> no one else got there till like 3 o'clock. <laughs> like, no one got there till 3 o'clock. <laughs> I don't know. This had nice locker rooms and that, and I'm just curled up on a couch, like yeah, <laughs> lights <laughs> off, right? Oh my god, yeah. that's yeah. great. <laughs> well, we smi- again? yeah, right. Well, <laughs> smiley for you. Um, the first moment that you walked through the door of House of Glory, we heard about the emo, which I think is really cool how it came about. But when you first walked through that door, were the nerves on on full gear for you that day? Uh, a little bit. Um, oh, I had, okay. I had kind of like stepped in. Well, I had a little, like a little, little, little bit of in ring experience before going in there. And by that little bit, I mean I randomly showed up to a Tony Atlas seminar in like Lewiston, Maine, the day after Christmas. <laughs> like literally, we just saw online Tony Atlas is running a seminar. So me and my brother jumped in my car. Drove like three hours up north to do a Tony Atlas seminar, even though neither one of us had any wrestling experience other than maybe doing a little backyard. But like, <laughs> so we show up and he goes, I'm running a seminar today. Like, <laughs> yeah. He goes, Oh, okay. Oh and then, like, God. it's like me, my brother, and then some big jacked up dude show up <laughs> and like he teaches us how to take bumps. He shows us how to do a chop and how to get thrown through the middle rope. And like, we spent the time learning those three things. And then, like, he looks at us, he goes, Do you guys got anything besides jeans? I went, No, I didn't even know we were going to get in the ring. We just figured you were going to talk to us for a couple hours. That's he, goes, cool. he goes, Go down to the, the home, the sports authority down the street and get some sweatpants. You guys are in the Battle Royal tonight. Ah, that's so, so good. The, the only time I've ever heard of people being eliminated from a battle royal by being thrown through the middle. <laughs> <laughs> because us three have no experience going over a top rope. That's so, like, uh, I remember, too, like, I got dumped through, through the middle rope. Of course, as soon as the bell rings, my first reaction was, attack my brother. So, <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah. That, 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 of course, was a highlight. And then um, 
I remember when I got eliminated, they had some dude out there that was a manager with a kendo stick. So I get eliminated. I'm like, okay, I'll make my way towards the back. And as I start to stand up, this guy cracks me with a kendo stick like <laughs> four times. I'm like, I'm just starting here at this. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And like the guy just like straight chased me back by beating me with a kendo stick. <laughs> that's amazing. It's a really, that's, really funny story. Yeah. That's so, there was that. And then when I moved to New York, I went I, I decided to pop into House Glory to just kind of visit it and like see what it was all about. And like I had kind of like sat in on the class and just kind of sat towards the back and I went, This is really what I want to do, but like I need to like get more prepared for it. So like I kind of like took a year to kind of like get myself prepared financially and everything like that, save up the money I need for the the payments or whatnot, and then like I went to a show for a uh, family wrestling entertainment, and Jay Lethal was there. So I went up nice. to Jay Lethal, and as a matter of fact, Tommy Dreamer was there too, because I remember going up to Tommy to get a picture, and he looks at me, he goes, "I know you from somewhere." He goes, why do I know you? I went, well, you gave me a T-shirt at a house show in Maine, but that was like eight months ago. He goes, I remember that. Why do I remember that? <laughs> and, then like, and then I go see Jay Lethal and I ask him, I'm like, hey, are you still kind of like a trainer at House of Glory? He goes, yeah, I poke my head in every now and then, but he owns it. He points behind him and it's Brian XL. And wow. in Brian's fashion, he's on his phone. And he looks up and goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Brian gave me the lowdown. That was on like a Sunday, and I think that following Tuesday, I walked in, slapped the money down, and signed up. So like I kind of poked my head in a little bit. Yeah. So being there, I wasn't too nervous. Um, and then like when I first started, I had people like Mark Quinn from Private Party was like already there. So like as soon as I got in there. And we just kind of roll around and I did like a moonsault or something for no reason. Mark Quinn's like, we're going to work together. We got to do some stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> the bad influence from day one. So he had me oh, doing yeah. everything I could not be doing on day one of pro wrestling training. <laughs> Quarter roll, jump up, moonsault bump. What? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did the same thing too. <laughs> it can either make you love or hate it. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple of people that from day one because Quinn took a took a liking to me and had me kind of just keeping up with him and doing some ridiculousness with him. Like from day one, we're just like, mm, who is this? Yeah. Like eyeballing me sideways or something, which of course none of them ever survived. But yeah, that's yeah, that's I mean that's the mark, isn't it? People who get jealous. You just yeah. gotta be you gotta be way more chill in wrestling, I think. I don't oh, yeah. let it get to you that bad. I can't. I can't understand the people that are like so high strung. Mm. Like it's supposed to be fun. Yeah, like, it's supposed to be fun. For the audience, and if you're not having fun doing it, then it's going to reflect, and people will people will pick up on your mood and your vibe very quickly. Oh yeah, they take that energy in. Yeah. Well, Shane, a very uh, similar question for you. When you first walked through the doors in WWE, I know you said you had a, an FCW tryout prior, but when you officially got signed, what was that feeling like for you and Mikey? It must have been a crazy experience, right? Yeah, it was very cool, man. Like I did, I think I did three tryouts in total. So we did the FCW one. We did one, a WWE one in Melbourne. Um and that was chill too. Like a lot of like the second two tryouts I did, I already had my job in Japan. So I wasn't too like worried about it. So I, I knew like the first one we did in Melbourne, um, like me, Mikey, Hartley Jackson, um, a bunch of us boys were just like, we were just dicking around with each other. Um, and like we had a match, me and Mikey tagged against Primo and um, I think, Alex Riley, is that the right name? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. On the fly, just had one on the fly, and then like Primo was so fucking good. Like uh -huh. he just like the way he would call spots out there, and like, he wasn't calling anything ridiculous. It was just like up and over, block this, come around, hip toss, something like that. But the way he talked it in the ring was just so calm, and 
I heard everything he said. And I was like, yep, yep, okay, good. Like his communication skills and stuff like that was a, a great learning experience. Um, and we just like, so that, there wasn't much pressure in that. And then we came over and did the tryout at the PC, which was like a three-day tryout. Um, and I still, I did, we, we had our jobs in NOAA as well. Like we, we weren't contracted anymore on a full-time contract. We probably had that to fall back on. Um, and we were pretty fucking sure of our skills. And like, I did that tryout with a torn ACL Ooh, and wow. it was no sweat. Like it was fine. The gym, the gym stuff, like oh, we did like the ring stuff I could do in my sleep. Um, the, the When we got into the gym and that's when like you see all the football players and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> all that, that kind of shit talked me up. I'm like, oh my God, no, I'm more of a conditioning endurance kind of guy. But I mean, that's just their different ways of testing you and things like that. But um, And then the promo part of it, like we, a bunch of us who had uh, had experience before, there was about eight of us, uh, myself, Mikey, Gagano, Tommaso, Biff, uh, Taylor. There's a bunch of us. Sorry, if I, sorry boys, if you forget. Um, <laughs> we got to just do one-on-one -on -one promos in a back room with Regal. And he's not even like, he wasn't oh, even like... Wow. He was like, wasn't even like cut a promo. He's just like had a conversation with us. And he's like, just tell me about yourself. Um, and then the next day when we did matches and um, matches and promos and the other people did promos, we we smashed through the promo segment really quickly. So they kind of, and like everyone, a lot of people had these like super sad, depressing, woe is me stories, like sob stories. And then, then I'm gonna get through it, blah blah blah, and it's just like, yeah, that's cool. Or like, I mean, some people had some pretty fucking sad stories that I'm like, that's I'm like, if that's real, that's I'm, I feel sorry for you, man. I'm sorry. I hope you get this. But also, I'm like, who cares? It's fucking pro wrestling. Like, make up a story. You're like, we're not really these characters. It's like, no. right. over someone getting mad at some people because they thought they made up a. Re a a dead grandparent or something like that. And they were like, oh, how dare they make that up? And then it, it, they didn't. It was a true story. Um, but then it's like, who cares if they made it up? The Undertaker isn't really a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> make shit up. Who gives a shit? It's fic we're fictional characters. Um, but yeah, so we blew through those and they were depressing. So they're like, talk for a minute about something that makes you happy. And so I talked about getting drunk uh, in Japan and being a fool. <laughs> Mikey talked about getting new socks and that cool feeling of new oh socks. God. Like, and so there was no stress in any of that shit either. Oh. Like, just fun. Um, and then that group of guys that we had too, were, we all were just kind of like trying to have a good time with each other as well. Um, and then after that, the last day we got pulled aside and told that we were going to get signed, which was a cool feeling. Um, but then also I hadn't, I'm not sure if I knew, I knew at the time, but I'd gotten a CT scan on my knee while I was back in Australia and I was waiting for the results to come back, which I think I had, or I, I don't know, I don't remember, but like the day I got back home to Australia, it's like, oh, here's your results. You've got a torn ACL. So... Ooh. That was a drag of being like, hey, it was Canyon Seaman at the time, emailing him saying like, hey, I got a torn ACL. I apparently had it the whole time. Um, they said it's going to be six months recovery um, and I'll get the surgery straight away. Six months recovery. I know there's like a six to nine month visa process anyway. Uh, if this disrupts anything, Please, um, thank you for giving me the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, six months, that's fine. Get it fixed. He just replied, get it fixed. <laughs> so we did my visa process uh, a little bit backwards so that we got the thing that took the longest time out of the way straight away. And then, yeah, I, I was lucky. A surgeon back in Australia was a 
big wrestling fan and put me up on the list because, um, like, over there, with the healthcare system, you just go on a waiting list. Uh, so he brought me in on, like, a Saturday, uh, which was his day off, and then I got my knee surgery done, like, two weeks after I uh, got my came back. And then, yeah, six months later, I, yeah, back in the ring training, yeah, slowly. And then, yeah, by the time all my visa and my contract and stuff had come through, my knee was fine. Huh. Done dot dot for the time being yeah <laughs> that must have felt great though first first the email that just said fix it right and yeah. then uh and then yeah. of course with the surgeon i mean that's that's great it's very like reassuring i feel with you on the shelf mending it uh some people you mentioned in that in that original group diy and i think they were one of your earlier matches too uh yeah in the you first Mikey, DIY. match some of yeah. them, yeah. Any uh, any memories? We just saw Johnny Gargano, of course, return on Raw. Any memories of working with DIY? Uh, well, we didn't really get to work with them very much. Um, we had that TV match and then one more title match in Melbourne, which was great. It was finally, like, the first, like, year or so, more than that, in NXT was rough, man. Like, a lot of it was... Cha- them changing everything about you like don't do this don't be you don't do this you go out and have like a good match or something if you felt like you had a good match you knew you were going to get reaped out for later like why would you do this that's not how we do things here um johnny and tomaso weren't signed at that point they were coming in and doing tv only um and and maybe the live events on the road but they weren't doing the coconut shows, which you try to do stuff and then you just get reamed out for doing it, um, like bumping people or anything like that. So were, they got to come in. They did like pretty much a lot of whatever they'd like on the TV and stuff, and that's where Hunter was there. And Hunter loved that stuff. So then when we got to wrestle them in Melbourne, I remember like Tommaso was like, no, no, let's fucking go out there and kill it. And like... Then years later, when I had the singles match with Johnny, he's like, I want them to see what we can do. Um, so they're, they're great. They're supportive guys. Always, um, yeah, been fans of them. And they've been fans of us, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, good memories of that. Good memories of, like, the, the tryout. Um, but, yeah, like I said, the, for the first few months, even, like, half a year or more, they weren't at the PC with us every day and stuff. So we didn't really see them all that much. Right. Uh, well, no, very cool moments, definitely, that you were able to have with them. Uh, Smiley, for you, correct me if I'm wrong, did you fight uh, at one point? You wrestled Roderick Strong? I did. Uh, How was that experience? Yeah, just sticking with the NXT black and gold. I thought that was so cool to see that you were able to take him on. That that one was a uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, and matter of fact, uh, the first person I ever hit with a four fifty splash was Roderick Strong. Uh, which, even though thank God camera angles were on the right place, because I did kind of overshoot a little bit, because I, I didn't realize when I do a four fifty, I travel really far with it, and he was a bit close. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that one that was great. That's when we we brought in a bunch of the ROH guys at the time. It's, and uh, uh, it was kind of like a. I think we got in trouble for it, but it, we were, were labeling it like House of Glory versus ROH. But we had like Kevin Steen, Michael Elgin, uh, I think Adam Cole was there, um, Roderick Strong was there, of course. And uh, yeah, it was just the my trainers saw that I broke my back every day at training. And I was always the first guy to show up, the last guy to leave. And they thought that I was in the right place. I was on the right path. And they gave me that that shot to run with Roderick Strong. And I made the most out of it. So Yeah, you definitely did. And, and that was a great one. What are some other ones that uh, that people should check out? Some other Psycho Lucha matches to really get get you? What do you recommend? Um... I've had some really, I had two really fun matches with Ricochet. Um, one for House of Glory and then one for Excellence Pro Wrestling. And that man is just a freak of nature when it comes to being strong. Like, 
I'm I'm a chubby boy. I'm a big boy, and he threw me around like a rag doll. And like I never felt like a, a small child in another man's arms like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I have there's a match on House of Glory's YouTube channel of me versus my trainer, Amazing Red. Mm-hmm. When I was more under the bad influence, if you will, uh, which I don't I don't fall under too much. I've usually played more of a a good guy most of my career um but it, it, it was it was fun to kind of be the bad guy and beat up my trainer for a little bit <laughs> um, so that, that's one of my favorites uh tj crawford he's one of the guys from out here in like the new jersey area um and if i remember correctly he's like a creative pro kid um nice. we had a hell of a match and uh that match was fun because sumi sukai uh, came to the show because she she was here with uh, Rogan Finley, I think that's how I pronounce his name. Yeah. So like, there's one point in the in the the match where like I hang TJ upside down on the ropes, and I, I run and I kind of like dove through the ropes feet first, and I caught his head and gave him like a neck breaker on the bottom rope as I dove out the ring, and I hit and I turn and I look, and Sumi's right there. I went, hey, oh, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> so, but that, that, that match is that match is definitely one that in my mind as one of my favorites. Um, ironically, a lot of my favorites are like are like some of the like the lesser known guys. Like, there's one match. Uh, it's me and Adam Payne, and like Adam Payne's like seven feet tall, like three hundred pounds. Like he's a monster, and like we just went out there and it was so fun because. I'm so used so to being cool. like the bigger guy, but like yeah. we had so much fun. He moonsaulted on me off of an entrance ramp, which was terrifying. Um, <laughs> yeah. Seven, all seven feet, right? Oh my God. Down. You see that big man like that coming down on you is scary. Uh, some of my brothers from House of Glory, you know, Ken Broadway, uh, Evander James, we had a yeah. one of my favorite matches from House my time at House of Glory. Oh God, there's so many. Like I, I just love wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that passion. It's serious. It's definitely on display. Uh, and to go off of that for you, Shane, big match. I'm sure you get asked about a lot. Was the uh, the second Dusty Classic that you versus AOP? Yeah. And uh, just how was that experience for you? And of course, the spot jumping off of the uh, the Shark Tank beam. Got to ask about that. What were you thinking during that? Uh, I'm not thinking too much. That was, <laughs> that, was a, that was a that was a long process of all of that. Like uh, like a lot of like during a lot of it, we we're getting told by some people like, "Yeah, you're winning the Dusty Classic, you're winning it," and I'm like, "No, we're not." Like I knew we won. Like look at the way you're pushing AOP, and like you're not. We're not winning. Like, that's not a thing. I had a torn ACL at that point as well. So, um, when you leaped, when you leaped off the, uh, the shot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The, like, weeks before that is the speaking of Roderick Strong, my singles match in the tag tournament against him. That's when I tore my ACL. Um, and then, but like, I'd, I'd done it before. And I was like, the first time I did it, I just wrestled. I kept wrestling for six more months and like the muscles around your leg kind of take over so when i tore it i i think i took like a week off and we just taped the shit out of it and it was fine like it's not it's not going to get any worse Mm -hmm. um and my bone my knee and my leg muscles knew how to stabilize it anyway um so yeah we're like we're told we're going to be main event of the show um we'd have 20 plus minutes and we were winning and then on the day we got moved to open up lost like 10 minutes and they're like they're up and i'm like yeah i know like yeah yeah yeah, cool like whatever but we're walking around they're setting that thing up and i'm looking at it and i'm like well we've got a gimmick match we've got to use the fucking gimmick somehow (laughs) um and like punches there and i'm like can i jump off that and he's like do you want to jump off it and i'm like I kind of have to. Some someone's gonna jump off it. Yeah. Like, like, you can't have it and not jump off it. I so, love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you gotta, the you rest gotta of the use match, it. Yeah. We we were like we've been 
like working with AOP a lot on the mm-hmm. coconut loops and stuff like that. And they're good brothers, um, good guys, good people. So yeah, that and then the next year's Dusty Classic where we were we had them in the opening round as the rematch and they were up. They were like, get everything, hit everything on us. And um I hit the big one with the Falcon Arrow. And I swear to God, and I got in trouble for that. They were like, you're not allowed to lift him up. I was like, who are you to lift him up? Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I, I swear in the original they cut it out. But <laughs> I, I, I went back and watched it. It's, it, it's still in there. Um, and, yeah, we were just like, let's go out there and just, like, kill me. And so that's what I was like. Have, you ever, like. have you ever seen someone get powerbombed onto the apron from inside the ring? And they're like, no. I'm like, let's try that. Let's just fucking do it. <laughs> like, yeah. They're like, are you sure, Shane? Like, he's, well, Shane, you're crazy, man. You sure? And I'm like, worst case, you miss, I hit the ground, and I get some time off. Worst thing that happens is I get some time off. <laughs> I mean, I guess and, I could have died. Oh, uh, yeah, but, no, I mean, you're already at the ACL. <laughs> that, no, that's not, not my problem either. It's not. No, it's. After that, it's nobody. Yeah, uh, I well, I hate to, I hate to skip ahead, but I do want to get to it. Um, perhaps maybe it was a fond memory for you, maybe not. But when you moved up to the main roster and Retribution started, uh, yeah. what what was the first pitch to you like of Retribution? If you could just take us through that that journey. Oh, there was no pitch. There was, there was no pitch. Just- <laughs> so you. <laughs> They're making it up as they went along. Like it was fucking it showed whatever. But like it was just from what we'd seen of the other stuff that people were doing, um, we were pretty like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I who wouldn't have wanted to be a part of that when it was just dudes in hoods with chainsaws flipping cars right. and throwing molotovs. I was like beating people up backstage. I'm like, that's the coolest shit in wrestling when people do hardcore shit and have this huge production into it. We're like, fuck yeah. And then as soon as we, so other people were doing that, and then as soon as it became us, <laughs> that the backstage <laughs> stuff kind of stopped. <clears throat> um, and then COVID hit pretty hard again, so we lost all the goons. We lost the putty <laughs> patrol. We lost our putty <laughs> goons. All, all it was- the, yeah, all these mobbing people, all that went away. We're like, uh-oh. <laughs> I remember it, it went from like it went from like what felt like 30 people at the very beginning when it first debuted yeah. with the people in hoods to like 10 to around seven or six to like three. Yeah, <laughs> was... yeah. because of the COVID restrictions, we just couldn't yeah. have extras there. Like it had to be bare bones at the shows. So, yeah. And then they wanted them to steer away from the realistic QAnon or whatever it is, what's the thing? I don't know, news, but like that kind of like realistic stuff. So that's where yeah. I guess the mask and like we pitched masks as well, but like we were pitching like kind of more cyberpunky ones, and then like mm. Dijak wanted more of a Darth Vader one, and I wanted more of like an Oni Demon mask, um, and they would just be like entrance ones, something like that to fit that. Um, cyberpunky kind of rebel, whatever the thing it is, and then yeah, that's not what we got. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that slapjack. Do you still have that slapjack mask? Yeah, it's that's. I got the the uh, I got the second Mark II. Uh, Lindsay Dorado has the Mark One one because I was going to get that one turned into like a full hood that could easily come on and off. But then, like, so those were the original ones, and then they made ones that actually were better fitted to our heads. Um, and that became the Mark II. And then there were some other prototype ones, which I'm pretty sure Mace has, and his kids play with them. So, yeah, they're around. They're, they're very high-quality masks. Like, yeah. the guy who made them, Jason Baker, made the mask for Black Phone, and he's made so many movie-quality masks. Uh, Jonah has the mask. The entrance mask he has, he made that. So he's a professional, great mask maker. Um, and he did the 
best he could do with what was given to him. <laughs> Which it leads me to my next question because I feel for a while not at least I didn't know who was actually under all of the masks. I didn't know that was you for a little bit. Yeah. Did did people did, did you, would, was there a moment? Would think that? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I would you be seen under that? Was there a moment yeah. when people really started to catch on? You were like, oh, they know it's me under here. People guessed it was me, and then I'd be like, you idiot, they wouldn't use Shane. He sucks. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he's fired. <laughs> it was always like me as in, because I was hiding my tattoos as well. But yeah, yeah it was like right. some of the some of the guesses were ridiculous. I'm like, I don't know, like there was, oh, what was one? It was like someone guessed thought it was someone was Roman and they had like the arm. Like zoomed in of the arm, like that's the same size, and 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 I think it was Mason. I'm like, oh, like no, like that's a black guy. Like, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Wrong. Yeah. Oh my, were you Roman? That's crazy. Uh, yeah. The the names the names of retribution is what I feel a lot of mm -hmm. people definitely remember. What were your? I mean, I've never slapjack is something, but T bar. Through me for a, I don't even know. Like, what what was up with those names? Do you remember hearing them the first time? What was the reaction? It was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, and then we like because we done this. I kind of we had the opening segment with I think Bray Wyatt and uh, Strowman, I believe, was the opening of that one. So it was like half an hour before, like, so doors weren't opening. So it's just Thunderdome. We had like half an hour. We're coming back through. Gorilla, we'd still get fully in gear, then load into where we were. So we had half an hour to like face paint and gear up and get it all going. And Richard just like, here's your new names, bam, 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 just to the three of us guys, because we were the only ones out there at the time. And then he said that the girls are going to be reckoning and retaliation it was yeah. going to be Mercedes one. Um, but then I think very quickly after we knew she wasn't. I mean, even like then we knew she wasn't actually going to be, she didn't want to do it. Um, and I'm like, can I have retaliation? Like, <laughs> can I have <laughs> switch? He's got no switch. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, I was like, they're a little bit, the, the names, like when he, he started with Mace and it's like, yeah, Mace is cool. Like Mace uh, yeah. is cool. T Bar were like, what? And then Slapjack <laughs> like, I'm like that's like I know what a slapjack is. It's a like a leather, like a leather thing with a bit of lead in it, mm -hmm. that, like a little baton kind of thing. Um, but I'm like, that's not a cool weapon, man. That's like kids. This is a kids program. They don't know what that is. Like, that's, yeah, that's the <laughs> no. T bar is is meant to stand for that boy ain't right. Are you serious? Yeah, it's not like a crowbar or like a different because crowbar was already taken. Um, right. No, it's. I think we never got real confirmation on anything. It's like that's what it is. And, like, and what is this character? I don't know. Figure it out. <laughs> and then do something, and the next day they go, "Eh." We like we put on monster voices because we're like, "Well, these are monster masks. Like, let's yeah. be supernatural monsters." Um, like you know, we appear from under the ring and stuff like that. And they're like, eh, make it more human. So the next week, we're more human. <laughs> God, it was must have been a crazy time. Definitely. I mean, to to be in something that was being built as you were trying to perform it. I mean, and it definitely, it showed. I, I feel like it showed you guys were trying, though, like your hardest. There was a lot of, there was a lot of effort put into that, you could tell, as a viewer. Yeah, maybe. From so your guys' part. Try. From your, yeah. I always try to do the best I can with when I'm out there, you know what I mean? I don't phone it in, but um, it did feel like as we were trying to really give it everything we could do, like the office was trying to get rid of it. I'm like, just get rid of it then. Like, if you don't want it, just get rid of it. Like, <laughs> let's just kill it off. Whatever, man. If you don't like it, you're the ones in control. <laughs> like, you did. It. <laughs> Two weeks later, no one will fucking remember. Nobody cares. There's things that's the fucking hilarious thing about like wrestling, but like, you'll see something pop up for like two weeks um, and do nothing, disappear for a few months, and then they'll bring it back. And people are like, oh, old thing good. <laughs> <laughs> Retribution was to come back now, people would fucking love it because old thing good. <laughs> so interesting. I don't know if that would ever happen, but 
<laughs> yeah, I, I could see that. I could see positive reactions. Yeah, I would. Definitely. I would love it. It's all like, yeah. good. You did get a match with Bobby Lashley out of that, though. Final final question on Retribution there. Yeah. You did get a, a U.S. title match on a pay-per-view, too. How'd you approach that match? Um, Lashley was like, we've been doing a lot of stuff with her business. Um, Lashley was very supportive, uh, a little bit of a mentor, him and Shelton. Because um, when I started doing, like, main event stuff, Shelton was around a lot, and I knew Shelton from back in Japan days. They did a little... Nola versus Suzuki Gun thing. So we wrestled each other a little bit there. And then I had some matches with him on main event. So he was a good mentor. And then so was Lashley with his experience. Um it was cool, man. Like I was a little I was a little knocked out from an earlier earlier that week or whatever. Because <laughs> that mask sucked. Like <laughs> like an open in my, I'm like, can we just like open the mouth up so I can breathe to hold it on? Because it doesn't, it's not, it's just got straps at the back to hold it on to my face so then the eyes don't move. It had to be tight. So when it's tight, it's pushing my chin. So I couldn't fully open my mouth. All the promos for me, like, rah, 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 because <laughs> I, can't, I, I physically can't open my mouth in that thing. So it's so hard to breathe in it. Mm. It's, it's like, got blinders so like i got hit from there when i was looking at someone there and it just rattled me um so but yeah bobby's so easy he's so good because he's like the big big muscle push man like yeah you don't have to reinvent the wheel with him and like he let me get a lot in um yeah. so much fun so, i did an interview a while back and they asked me about like the good times from retribution i forgot this one so you're getting this exclusive that i haven't told in any other interview we had a six man, another six man one against uh, Retribution versus uh, Hurt Business. And during those times, the Thunderdome times, sometimes during the ad breaks, you stop and just like reset yourself, go through things. Um, this one, they were kind of like, yeah, keep working, stay warm, but you don't have to go all out. And it was me, the ad break comes in, and I'm in there with Lashley. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm a shoot on Lashley. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, not like, I didn't like throw a fist on shit. I'm not, I don't have a death wish. But so I'm like just trying to keep him down, like in a wrestling hold or whatever. And then I, it took him a couple of seconds to realize what I was doing because it was, I'm so bad at it and he's so big and strong <laughs> that he's like, oh, and he started kind of like giggling and then. Boom, Dex me, and I'm just trying oh to get my out God. of this. Like, <laughs> we're just like wrestling around. He's laughing because I'm terrible at it, but <laughs> legit trying to do it. And like, we come back from Adam, I'm gassed. <laughs> like, I wasted so much energy <laughs> doing that. It was a good memory. It was a good fun. I love that. Oh my god, that's so interesting with the ad breaks too. I never even thought about that. Yeah, when you yeah. cut to come, why, minutes, why keep going? Yeah, yeah. Three um, right. Well. We'll start to we'll start to wind it down. Smiley for you, I uh, I want to know with with your crazy arsenal that we talked about, and as you said, you know, keep reinventing how to get your maneuvers off. But are there maybe three top spots of yours that that you hold close to your heart from your matches? Um, I mean, my four fifty is always kind of something special to me. Yeah. Um. I haven't done it in a while, but that, that match I did with Roderick Strong, when I, the first ever 450 I hit, of course, I had to go above and beyond, and I had to do a double jump into it. So I, I hit, like, if the buckle's kind of, like, here, I jump from the middle rope on this side to the top rope on this side, and then did the 450. And when I got to the back, you know, somebody comes up to me and goes, yo, all the ROH guys were watching, and when you hit the 450, they all popped. So, like, to know I pop, like, Kevin Steen and Elgin and Adam Cole. It's like, yeah, yeah, that, that was yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I got, kind of got excited about that one. Um, nowadays, I, I do it. I do like a tightrope walk into the 450. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, wow. I walk out on the middle on the top rope and off 450 from there. That's I haven't sweet. done the double jump on in a few years. Yeah. Uh, I mean the middle rope. The, the little corkscrew gimmick I do, I was talking about earlier, I call it the yeah. T-Virus. 
um because i'm a okay. resident evil nerd that one's <laughs> kind of special to me because um that, that that's one of the few times i could kind of pop my trainer yeah. you know like when you're trained by amazing red he's pretty much seen it all yeah so to, know, to know i could kind of catch him off guard with one and pop him that you know makes it feel a little special um I, honestly i don't i don't know like i never really i guess put that much of a connection with the moves like mm-hmm. i think it's more like the the i just look for more of the reactions that they get you know like like the the, the t-virus always gets a crazy reaction because nobody's gonna expect you know a 230 pound guy to bounce off the rope sideways and corkscrew and hit a splash out of nowhere and so that that one always gets the crowd kind of up on their feet Lately, I've been doing yeah. one where, where I do like a back roll into a headstand where it's okay. legit hands to my side and I'm standing straight up <laughs> on my head. And I just go Ming! and pencil dive on them. That one always gets a chuckle That's out of fantastic. people. That's yeah. fun one. Um, so, like, the most rid- the more ridiculous I can get, the better. You know? So unique. Um, yeah. I just, I just yeah. like to be ridiculous and the crowd likes it <laughs> so yeah. as long as they keep reacting to it i'll keep doing it nice. nice oh for sure and you mentioned uh resident evil it's really funny um because i was gonna my when i told my friend i was gonna have uh shane thorn on the first thing he said was about smosh and i don't actually watch smosh that i never really got into it but your fiance i believe was is part of it right yes yeah she's in the other room We'll shout out definitely, uh, yeah. but that's yeah. that's really cool though. And um, is Smosh is Smosh is gaming, right? I'm not I'm not mixing that up. They Smosh do have, is, a game. They do have, they a do game. have gaming Smosh gaming. Okay, because I was gonna yeah. was gonna try to segue that into your video game debut. You had three. You're in three WWE video games. One of them is Slapjack. The other two is. Right. is yeah, you know, yeah, I am. Yeah, that was cool. That was a good. Like that to me was like the first ones. I think. 2K16 and that, like, mm. actually cool too. Like, you know, not everyone gets an action figure, so fucking whatever, but <laughs> I was a big player. Uh, so being in a video game was pretty cool, even if, like, sometimes you see the characters that people make are better. I'm like, damn, that's way better. Like, the first one Mikey's in as Nick Miller, he, like, Mikey is tanorexic, where he has to be tan for the gills. And in this one, he's like pale white and doesn't have wrist tape on. And I'm like, Mikey has never wrestled without wrist tape on. Like, I don't know <laughs> what they, what photo they designed this for. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. That is really funny. So I'm assuming you don't, you don't play them as much as I was going to say. If you had the choice, would you go with Shane Thorne or Slapjack? Because they're both in 2K20, I think. Both of us? No. I feel I like there, there's a, there's a game where. Both of you are in it. I want to say, unless it's the newest one, because because Mia Yim and Reckoning are side by side. Yeah. I'm Shane. Shane had Thorn is in the <laughs> He's the only one doesn't get the doubles. <laughs> oh, okay. hey, Shane Thorn. Shane Thorn got fired years ago. Slapjack <laughs> Slap 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 took over. Story, that wasn't the storyline because we got contracts from. Uh, attacking WWE, so I didn't have a contract, and then I came in a slapjack, and then I got a contract again because that's what that's how life works. If you want to be somewhere, attack it, and then they give you a contract. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. That's what I'm doing wrong. So this you want to be in the NBA? I storm the court. Just listen. AEW is coming to New York soon. Yeah, yeah, they and are. You- yeah. That's how it works. Go shoot, go shoot the run in on AEW. Yeah, man. That'll work. I, I look for, I'm looking forward to their game. That game looks sick. Like, I love that game, no does Mercy, cool. shit like that. Yeah, I love those games. Um, the early SmackDown games were pretty fun, too. Like, I have very fond memories of playing them with my high school mates. Um, but yeah, same with, like, No Mercy, man. Played the, the f out of that game. That was sick. That's I, uh, looks like. Oh, yeah, go on. Go on. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I have like this odd little hobby where I build these. Um, they basically look like the original Game Boys, but yeah. they have the six buttons. Uh, oh, yeah. They have six buttons, the two bumpers. 
they have a D-pad and a joystick, and it runs off of a Raspberry Pi. So I have every game from like Atari and Nintendo all the way up through N64 and uh, like PS1 and stuff like that on on like a memory card. So I have like something like 2,000 games on this thing. And uh, I'd just be like at work playing like an old school Game Boy, but I'm playing like No Mercy or I'm playing like the Virtual Pro. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Fucking No Mercy was. I'm sitting there like in the break room like playing Game Boy. So a weird little hobby I got of building those. Quick wrestling, do that. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Smiley, final question for you is uh, what can we expect from you future goals-wise? What is on your your agenda moving forward, either near or far? Uh, I mean, I take it one day at a time. Um, of course, the goal is something like a New Japan. It's to get into like an AEW or a WWE, even though you hear a lot of negative about WWE. But like you know, it's still like it's like I want to get to those platforms because like for me personally, like my favorite thing about wrestling is like the connections and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and like kind of making a difference for people. So like like pro wrestling magic in New Jersey is like one of my favorite places to go, especially when I'm a good guy over there because like we have a fan Mikey who's uh, he was born two months early and he has cerebral palsy, so he's stuck kind of in a wheelchair and he can't speak but he loves pro wrestling so like during intermissions like my favorite thing to do is like i'll run up in when i'm supposed to be selling merchandise and trying to make money i run over to him and i pick him up out the wheelchair and i look at his mom like i'm stealing your kid and i roll him into the ring and just roll around in the ring with him for all of intermission and uh, i think it's like the pinned video i have on like my instagram and my twitter but, like, you know, we'll roll around, we'll play around. I'll stand up on the rope like I'm going to jump on him, and he just laughs at it. And then, like, you know, I would grab him and roll him on top of me and, like, have him have the whole crowd count the one, two, three. You know, so I do the job for Mikey every show. That's, but, like, That's really cool. Like, connections like that is what it's, it's all about to me, you know? And it's just, like, if, if I get to that bigger platform, I can have more connections with people like that, you know? I, I can... Like, I, I'm one of them guys, like, I respond to 90% of, like, the people that message me online. Like, and the only reason I respond to the other 10 is probably because I'm sleeping. But, like, <laughs> you know, I just, I love the connections with people and the fans. Um, a big goal of mine is to one day actually, like, own my own wrestling school. Because, like, with House of the Glory, I've been there, like I said, since, like, year one. And, like, I think we're going on something like 10, 11 years now that the school's been open. And like when I go into the school, more than more than likely, I'm gonna go grab a couple of the, the newer kids and go, "Hey, you're doing that role wrong. Come here, come, my child. Let me help you." You know, and I go to like pull them to the side and I just teach them. And then like while Red's trying to teach lesson, next thing you know is I'm teaching them like, "Hey, if you do this, it's a cool like pin sequence." And then Red will yell at me from the ring or whatever. But uh, <laughs> I love to teach like and help people like learn stuff for like wrestling and stuff like that. So. I have like I have my goals, uh, but the main one is just make a living off of wrestling, whether that be in a big company or if it's just doing indies for decent paydays and just being able to, you know, feed my son and keep my girlfriend happy. Yeah. That's super cool. It is really cool to hear that. And best of luck, really, with everything. Yeah. Nothing but success your way. Uh, and Shane, for you, obviously now – being in New Japan, as I said at the start, reuniting with the mighty Don't Kneel alongside Jonah, of course. Uh, what can we expect from you, your future goals? Uh, um, money. I just want money. I don't care about people. <laughs> I don't care about the people. only connection I want is cast to my hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, <want> to <laughs> I was like... Please ask me the same thing. I'm just going to be like, money. Like, it's like so great. <laughs> money. I am glad you are my Mr. Crab. Yeah. No, it's uh, after being in like WWE for so long and like a lot of it, it stopped being fun and like my creative, my creativity started to dwindle. Um, you do kind of give up and you become 
like just the money the money is so fucking good like it's so good like you'd be stupid to say no to it but like you know you do get it does wear on you and so like i'm so thankful that like i get to go to new japan now like such a big company and like working with all these guys and back with my friends and just having fun like i love working in socal at the moment too like um a lot of these shows like like i work i've been working in mpw and like i worked I, will, I work for free sometimes. I work for a case of beers other times. As long as it's a fun idea, like I tag with uh, Johnny Robbie, and like she's so she's a rookie out here, and she's very over. So I, I just make her do all the work, and then I come in and do my fun stuff. <laughs> like so, there is there's, there's this balance of making my money with it and then enjoying it because i just want to enjoy it man i love wrestling i love enjoying it like i go down to the training school most weeks and i love teaching people there and just having fun with people especially now like when i first started wrestling and like it was a lot more serious like was it 20 years ago or whatnot and i get it i get it like we would gatekeep and we didn't want everyone in there and like you had like wrestling has to be like this wrestling has to be like that and now that i've been around and i've done stuff i'm like wrestling as long as you're safe and you don't safe to yourself and more importantly you're safe to your opponent yeah man try everything nothing's wrong everything can be everything can be right in this so like have fun as long as you're having fun with it man like you're gonna do good things um so yeah new japan man i head back next week i'm there what do we got? The first match is TMDK versus Chaos. And then not long after that, you've got myself and Jonah against Tanahashi and Okada. Main event of Kurok and Hall. Going back to them lights. I know uh, Jonah has his stuff with Okada. So Tanahashi, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the ace. If you're the ace, then I'm the two of clubs. And here are my two clubs. <laughs> and Yano, great, you're man. all right. Yano's a good dude. I like him. Got a good bar. Gave me beer once. What more do you need? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest man to make friends with. Yeah, yeah seriously. Man. Case of beer. Sure, man. Buy me a beer and I'll be your mate. That's so great. Uh, and final question, Shane. I mean, this has been so much fun. Do you have any lasting advice for uh, for Smiley as he continues on? Oh, yeah, definitely quit now, become a plumber. <laughs> People are always going to need to go to the toilet. Um, so get a trade and you'll have money for life. People are always going to need to shit. <laughs> true, true. You're doing it on the right track, man. As long as you're enjoying it, um, it's good to have a good fall, like a fallback plan. I don't have one. Um, you know, that's why I am marrying a super talented, funny, <laughs> sexy, lady so you know marvel put her in one of your movies <laughs> and, uh, but you know that's the attitude just to enjoy it be nice to everyone um be nice to everyone on your way up because you're gonna be on your way down at some point um yeah just be a good person to people to be around like a lot of i i i attribute like so uh, the last year i was uh, in WWE, maybe a little bit less than that when retribution stopped uh they did the first rounds of releases and i was not on that list i believe and i wasn't doing anything i didn't even have a name uh, I think just because i was good to have around like i'd go to the shows i'd go say hello to everyone see if anyone needed help even non-wrestling people might like, you need a help carrying a box or some shit i don't know like be useful be someone be someone that people want to be around Wrestling is very subjective. So even if you're a terrible wrestler, if you're safe and you're like someone people like to be around, that's cool, man. Like do that, be that, be, be a good person. And you seem like a very good person. So yeah, man, that's my advice. You just keep being you. Hustle, loyalty, respect, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my original advice. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that one before. That's, that's yeah. a new take. Brand new. <laughs> Rewind, recap, relive. For over 50 episodes, the revolutionary force in wrestling interviews.